Okay, here we are. <laughs> um, we're going to have a little look at sharpening inside of Lightroom. And it's going to be brief. We're not going to do any image processing or very little of it. But I just want to show you a quick dodge um, for sharpening an image. When we're dealing with a, a, a lighting situation such as we've got here, which is, believe it or not, a very high contrast lighting situation. Not like taking a photograph in full bore sunshine, because that's a super colour saturated high contrast situation. Because there's not much colour in this image, it doesn't initially appear to be high contrast. But oh boy, it really is high contrast. And the problem we get with images such as this, if I just bring this to a one-to-one -one view, um, as I was saying, the problems we get with an image such as this, and this doesn't have to be the sea stacks at Rikonasti, you don't have to go to Iceland to find this. We could have winter trees silhouetted against an overcast sky, all sorts of things will lead you into this basic image scenario or imaging scenario. And it's all to do with these edges where we've got low frequency detail, which let's just go through it. The low frequency detail is the sky and it's also the white water, which basically looks like this and has got very, very little detail in it because I've used either a 6-stop or a 10-stop neutral density filter to make the sea go all milky. And this is where we start to get the problems in the immediate foreground when we've got highly detailed, high-frequency detail rocks bordering directly on very bright, low-frequency detail areas. And we have problems with edge sharpening artifacts in other words halos and sharpening halos are funny old things really if we look at this image as it is it's got no sharpening on it whatsoever if we look here now if i go and double click the radius detail and amount sliders in the sharpening details panel now we've got lightroom's default sharpening applied and I don't know if you can just about see it with YouTube video compression, but if I blow it up to 11 to 1, you should just start to see a sharpening halo coming in there. And if I go up to the edge of this C stack, you can now see we've got definite sharpening halo artifacts occurring. Now, just going through the actual controls for the sharpening in Lightroom, we have an amount slider, which is basically just a volumetric control. It's actually applying more or less sharpening in a manner which is dictated by the values of the radius and the detail sliders. So if I slide the amount slider to full volume, in other words 150, all the way over to the right, it's applying maximum sharpening with a radius of one pixel and the detail slider is set to its default value of 25. Now, the actual radius slider itself, it's it's simple but it's not quite as simple as it seems but we don't really need to go into it here all it's basically dictating is how far either side of what lightroom decides is the actual edge how far does it do the sharpening in other words how many pixels radius either side of that edge the sharpening takes place and the way sharpening works or the style of sharpening that Lightroom's using at the moment. It basically makes the lighter side of the edge go lighter and the darker side of the edge go darker. The only problem is, as you can plainly see, that the lighter side of the edge has actually gone lighter than what's on the light side of the edge, vis-a-vis -vis the sky. And the dark side of the edge has gone darker than what's on the dark side of the edge, 
these are the the rock of this C stack so we have a bit of a problem the radius slider if we move it to the left actually makes the edge go narrower because it's now got less radius applied to it but it still shows this sharpening halo and as I said before everybody notice, knows what sharpening halos look like they always assume they're white but they're not they are white on the light side and they are dark on the dark side of the edge so what we need to do is we need to play around and look at the other sliders well we've only got one in reality which is this the detail slider the noise reduction slider does actually figure in sharpening and the way you control sharpening but we're not going to talk about that at the moment this detail slider if we slide it all the way over to the left you'll now notice that if I take all the amount off we are still getting some sharpening applied over here but you'll notice that especially the dark side of the edge is now sort of evened itself out and we're not getting those much darker pixels and we'll also notice that the white side of the edge is now decreased phenomenally that's because over on the left the detail slider inside a lightroom and in camera raw is actually using unsharp mask but it's using halo suppression as well so it's using two algorithms unsharp mask and halo suppression if we move the detail slider all the way over to the right whoa boy yeah but it's now using something called deconvolution sharpening but in reality it's a very weak very poor sort of deconvolution sharpening that Lightroom is using here because the deconvolution algorithm is actually only being applied once there's like one iteration of it and if you go to use other raw processors such as the one I keep mentioning the free one raw therapy you can have multiple iterations of the deconvolution sharpening algorithm being run on an image and uh, yeah it doesn't uh, it doesn't look like this nothing like it and uh, we don't get anywhere near as much uh, halo artifacting going on but you'll notice that the detail slider does pull up an awful lot of noise in places where we do where we don't really want it too much these are the, the high frequency detail and where we don't want it at all the low frequency detail up here in the sky so what we need to do is we need to sort of do a balancing act but before we start trying to do a balancing act let's go and have a look at the other uh, control we've got over sharpening which is the masking now I find that the masking um, slider is quite useful when I'm doing wildlife because I've usually shot it with a long lens I've got one subject in which is fairly close to me and my backgrounds are very blurry full of bokeh lots and lots of low frequency detail super low frequency detail and I've got a lot of separation between my background and my foreground subject so the masking slide is quite useful um, for doing birds in flight and things like that but when it comes to landscapes where everything from the immediate foreground right up to the clouds in the sky is in focus and we've got a super massive amount of depth of field um, the masking slider tends to be a little less useful if I actually hold down the alt key and move the masking slider we can now see that where the mask is black there'll be no sharpening where it's white the sharpening will be applied and where it's grey it will only partially show up so if I move that masking slider all the way to the right to the point where the sharpening is off the sky in other words the sky has actually gone black if I now lift up from there you can see that it's now made my high frequency detail go just as muddy 
as it was before we actually applied any sharpening to it so the masking slider doesn't really do a, a very good job on this particular landscape image because it is such a high contrast shot and if I push that masking slider all the way over yeah it's only applying now to the edge to, or the sharpening is only being applied to the edge but it's not doing anything to negate the sharpening halo so we'll take that masking slider all the way off and I'm going to leave the detail slider over at full deconvolution sharpening I'm going to leave the radius slider down at its minimum and I'm going to pull the amount slider back to around about 40-ish something like that and yeah so we've got a certain amount of noise being generated in the sky we've got a certain amount of sharpening halo going on it's if anything it's more biased towards the light side of the border or boundary or edge than it is the dark side so I'm just going to leave it there and this is where we sort of get a little bit bit of a low down dirty trick it's quite quick it's quite easy I'm going to right click and I'm going to go edit in Photoshop and this image will now scoot over into Photoshop and there it is I'm now going to go back to Lightroom and I'm going to take all the sharpening off I'm now going to right click and go edit in Photoshop so now we're going to have two versions in Photoshop of the same image one sharp one not so sharp or one with no sharpening at all so this is the one with no sharpening at all and all I'm going to do is grab my move tool I'm going to click and drag the soft image over onto the original sharp image hold down the shift key and drop it firmly on top like that so now the two images are perfectly aligned we don't have to do any auto alignment because basically it's not two images it's two versions of the same image so if we take these up to 100% and have a look to see what we've got this is our soft image and the layer beneath contains our sharp image with the sharpening halos that you can see just there so we'll take that back to a fit to screen view temporarily and what I want to do is with this I'll, I'll actually just name that soft there we go so we know what we're doing and I'm going to duplicate that layer so now we've got this soft copy I'm now going to come to image adjustments threshold and when we pull up this threshold dialog box it will have a value of 128 stuck in it now if you think about it in 8-bit RGB terms pure white is 256 so our threshold here at 128 is actually encompassing everything from black 0 up to and including 128 mid grey I actually want it to include a little bit more and so what I'm going to do is move the slider to the right and I'll keep going and now I'm just getting this little selection here this little black area that's just come in here above this rock and that is actually a shadow under a braking roller wave and what I'm going to do is move the slider back until that just disappears so we're on 142 now if you try this the actual value that you put in here will probably be a little bit different and it is something of a I'm not going to say a trial and error thing because you, you sort of have to think about what you're doing here for a minute but what we're actually trying to do is separate all those dark rocks from everything that is lighter than they are so the sky and the highlights in the water which is basically all the water they all need to be white and we can't do this with a luminosity mask 
it proves extremely difficult to try and do it with luminosity masks so that's why I always recommend you use the threshold layer to do this and so anyway I'm going to click OK and then in the channels panel you can see that all four channels here the blue the green the red and the composite RGB all look the same they look like this so all I'm going to do is command or control click on the composite RGB and now you can see I've got marching ants I'm going to come back to my layers panel and I'm actually going to turn this threshold soft copy off I don't need it anymore I could actually go and delete it but now I've got this soft layer active and all I'm going to do is click the masking icon and now that selection that we got or that threshold selection that we got is now a mask on the soft layer so everything that's white reveals everything that's black conceals so we are revealing the soft sky and the soft water and we are concealing the soft rocks and basically in a nutshell if I take this up to a 100% view now you can see we've got sharp rocks with virtually no sharpening halo on them and if we come down to uh, this lovely big rock in the foreground look how sharp that rock is and yet there is no sharpening halo anywhere around there and the other biggie is this one here and if I actually turn this layer off and then go into it at 100, 200, 500% you can see we've got a sharpening halo around there and if I go and activate that layer now you can see that sharpening halo is gone so there you go go and give that a try for some of your landscape scenes where you've got dark detail be they sea stacks mountains or trees against some very pale clouds in a somewhat overcast sky and see if that works for you it's a cracking technique it, it's very quick once you learn to, once you've learned the technique and you understand it it's a cracking technique to actually give yourself a very very precise sharpening scenario or sharpening workflow to your images and uh, so hope you enjoyed that hope you found it useful if you did go give me a like click the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and seeing as it's that time of the year again i shall just say to and have a good one